Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about the Eight of Swords and shadow work and how this card can help you with your shadow work, help you when you're stuck and just help you figure out things that are stopping you from doing it what it is that you want to do, being who you are and having the life you want to have. But before we dive into that, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path and Tapping Into Abundance. If you want to know more about Wicca and Witchcraft and Shadow Work, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. If you want to know where to start your witchcraft practice, but you're just not quite sure how, where to start, what to do, how to learn, then have a look at my free masterclass, How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice. The link to that is in the description field below this video. I've had this card come up so many times in my lifetime <laughs> when I've done readings for myself and I'm sure that when you you're doing your shadow work if you're using the tarot at all in your shadow work or if you're working with other people this card comes up a lot when they're feeling stuck now from a divination perspective there can be a lot of uh, other things that are keeping this person stuck where they are feeling imprisoned uh, but from a shadow work perspective it's about us creating this imprisonment for ourselves and the solution to the imprisonment and getting out of the imprisonment is of course in the card as well. Within every problem is a solution. So from an esoteric point of view, you want to be the solution and not the problem. So we have to focus on the solution. What the card shows is you've got a lot of imagery there. And if you've got this particular deck, this is the Waite Smith deck, uh, you can pull this card out and have a look at it. But on this card, you've You've got a woman who's tied up, blindfolded. She seems to be trapped within a whole lot of swords that are rooted into, into the earth and the ground. There's some water around, there's some water behind. And behind the water, which is behind her, you've got this mountain and a castle on top of the mountain. So there's a lot going on in this card, even though it's a, a card of stillness, there's, there's not a lot of physical action in there and it's a card of being trapped or feeling entrapped anyway there's actually a lot going on in the card when we're stuck or we're going for a tarot reading or we're asking the cards for advice to help us maybe you're you're doing some shadow work and you don't know where to start or maybe you're doing some shadow work and you're a bit baffled by something and you want to find out more information about it so you go to the cards to help you find out more information about it, this card turns up. Have a think about what your, your castle is because in the background of this card, there is a castle. It's on top of the mountain. <laughs> the castle is what you want. It's your castle. It's your dream. It's your goal. It's the thing you, you desire the most. It's what you want that you're struggling to obtain or keep. What is that? What's, what's the aim? What's the desire here? What is your castle? So that's the first thing to look at is what is my castle in this scenario? Because the castle's on top of a mountain and mountains require you to go to a lot of effort and a lot of work to climb them in order to get to the castle. So this goal or this dream or whatever it is that you're wanting and, and that you're desiring that you're being stuck with not being able to achieve it's actually something that is going to require some kind of effort and hard work. And that's just the reality of the situation. So expect that, yes, this is a difficult goal to obtain for whatever reasons, and that you are going to have to climb a mountain in order to get there. So this card's telling you there's work to do. Uh, and if you want to get to that castle, you're going to have to put in some work. You're going to have to put in some effort. So there's part of the solution there for you. It's not going to miraculously happen. You're going to have to put in the effort. The woman in the card is facing the opposite direction. So she's not even facing her goal or her dream castle. <laughs> uh, so where are you turned in the wrong direction? In, in it's almost like you're turned away from it in some way so how are you turning yourself away from this goal this dream that you you want to obtain 
She's blindfolded, so she's not seeing things. So that can mean that you either don't want to see something or that you just can't see something because you're blinded. So for me, I often feel that your goal or your desire sometimes is a bit fuzzy. It may not be very clear. And the reason it's not clear is because you either don't want to see it because there's something confrontational about it. Even the things we really want in our lives can bring up fear. And so the blindfold can be a way of protecting yourself from having to face the fear of what you may have to achieve or, or who you might even be when you achieve that goal. So many of us are afraid to actually achieve our goals and step into who we really are because we say to ourselves on a subconscious level, if I achieve that and I become that person, uh, what's that going to do? You know, who is it going to upset? How is that going to change my life? Who will I be when I'm this person? And sometimes we're afraid that we're not going to be a good person or we're somehow going to become a bad person because we achieve these things. So a lot of that blindfolding can just simply be that we can't see the castle very, very clearly, which makes it very, very hard to then do any magic towards uh, getting it and also to be able to um, have a clear path as to how to get up there. Because it's a swords card, swords is air, it's the air sign, right? And it's about communication, it can be about thinking and thoughts and beliefs. The swords are stuck in the earth, okay? So when you think of it from a, an elemental point of view, you've got earth and you've got air, and earth and air are sort of the opposite and when it comes to elements. So if the swords are facing into the earth and, and are grounded to some degree into, into the earth, or just balancing there, they're connecting to earth. So that means that any, any ideas or any way of being able to be inspired from an ideas point of view could be a little stifled because it's, 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 it's being stuck. The, the ideas are stuck, so you're stuck for ideas. You kind of think, oh, I don't know what to do next uh, because the air air element is, is kind of being weighed down by the earth element. So the swords around the woman are, are basically saying that you've, you've got yourself all bound, all tied up because you can't think clearly, you can't see clearly, and a lot of that is because the thinking that's going on is not free to flow, the, the thinking isn't flowing. She may have analysis paralysis, okay, she may be over, over analyzing something and when you overthink things and you get stuck in analysis, you're, you're not in touch with your intuition, which is the watery aspects to the card, and you're not in touch with that sort of more spiritual connection, which can also be represented by the water in the card. What she needs to do, or what this person in the card needs to do, is to start to get in touch with the intuition. Start to work with leading a little bit more intuitively and understanding that the beliefs are most likely creating the problem in the first place. So to start your shadow work from, from this card, you write down, maybe journal, what your castle is. What you may believe is the mountain to get to the castle. You may see a lot of, lot of difficulty in getting there. You may be perceiving difficulty in getting to that castle. So it looks like a mountain and feels like a mountain. How are you, where are you not clear in your vision? How, how fuzzy is it or, or how blinded are you to, to your vision and how are you feeling stuck? Where in your body are you feeling stuck when it comes to physically feeling that feeling of being stuck? Write down what you're feeling emotionally and follow the beliefs to what, where those feelings are coming from. What are your beliefs about the castle? What are your beliefs about your ability to get to the castle? What are your beliefs about the work required the climbing of the mountain to get to the castle. Write down all of those beliefs because each and every one of those beliefs are the swords that are surrounding this person on the card. The fact that you're so addicted to those beliefs, it's, it's the, where they're coming down into earth and 
they need to be able to be freed, they need to be released. This card, this version of this, the Eight of Swords, uh, behind the figure on the card, it we all assume, because it's an eight, and there's there's we can already see eight swords on here, that she's actually got nothing behind her, which means that all this person has to do is to turn around <laughs> 180 degrees and walk through the swords. In order to turn around, it means you have to turn things around, right? You have to turn your beliefs around. You have to turn your perceptions around. And the way to do that is to challenge the belief, is to ask yourself how, did, how true does this belief feel or these beliefs feel, and to challenge them, to turn them around to, well, what if it's the opposite? What if I can do this? Or what if something else can be done? It's, it's turning the beliefs around to find the opposite of that belief and to work with that, to start to challenge yourself uh, with your beliefs and not be so addicted to, to the belief because we are addicted to our beliefs. And it's a chemical addiction to the emotions that the beliefs create in our bodies. And that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to escape from our beliefs and our perceptions and why they feel so real and so true. So this card's solution is saying, connect with your intuition, connect with the water and turn around your beliefs. Try to turn them around 180 degrees so that you can at least be facing the castle. <laughs> Take off the blindfold, which is probably also being cloudy because of beliefs and move forwards towards climbing that mountain up towards the castle. If you want to do tarot coaching with me, I am now doing tarot coaching again one-on-one. -on -one. You can book a tarot coaching session with me. There's a link in the description field under this video where you can book either half hour or a full hour of tarot coaching with me. And that is to do with, you know, answering any of these questions or helping guide you uh, with using the tarot in a way that can give you a bit more of a deep dive into what may be uh, going on for you. We usually go to the tarot because we're feeling indecisive about something or we're feeling stuck in some way. And the tarot coaching can help you uh, move through and maybe make those decisions, which deep down inside you already know is actually the right decision but sometimes you just need that that guidance <laughs> from the cards um, that reinforcement from the cards so the link is in the description field below this video if you like the video hit the like button share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe i'm sandra from mystery witch school i'll see you on the next video